I'm going to talk about something I'm sure most of you have never heard of. I didn't hear of it until a few months ago and upon research have found out how much destruction and kind of craziness it can cause in your body. And it's called the Epstein-Barr virus. 75% of Americans have it. Most of it's undiagnosed. It's very difficult to diagnose with a blood test. You have to really go by symptoms. Um, they can be mild in the early stages. It has four main stages of the virus and how it progresses. Um, the problem is it can lay dormant for years, especially if it hides out in your liver, which typically it likes to do because it's kind of warm and cozy there. Um, but the, the virus has mutated over time and kind of advanced itself with our diet and our chemicals that we're exposed to. Um, it's can, it's contracted through bodily fluids, kind of the same way HIV is. Um, it's in the same herpes viral fa family as chickenpox and shingles. They are viral infections of the nervous system, um, which gives you the itching and burning, but it's in that same family, and you'll see kind of why and, and how they're related. So stage one, again, it will lay dormant in your bloodstream. Um, basically with no symptoms anywhere from a few months to years and there is no formula and there's no way to tell um, it, how long that's going to last for you. All the while it's doing that it's kind of replicating itself and building like an army against your immune system so it's kind of building its numbers while it's hiding in your organs keeping a low profile until a major stress triggers it to the next stage and triggers it to kind of advance itself. What major stress I mean is a physical, emotional, poor nutrition, hormonal, either puberty, pregnancy, or menopause will activate it into stage two. So stage one is kind of low key, not a whole lot happens there other than it's kind of building its army. Stage two typically surfaces as mononucleosis. Um, which is very contagious. So if you if you had mononucleosis or you know somebody that does now, it's very contagious. You really need to disinfect. Um, and I, I don't know. I've never had it that I know of. Um, you know, mono can be very mild, where you would have kind of flu-like symptoms for maybe a week, maybe two weeks, and you kind of chalk that up as the flu. Or like in high school, I've known of people that were like literally out of school for like a month and a half because they had mono. Um, can last, like I said, can last two weeks or months. You get that fatigue, sore throat kind of thing. Often, mono is accompanied by streptococcus bacteria, which will lead to strep throat, which I had when I was younger. Sinus, nose, kidney, bladder infections. So the the, the Epstein Barr virus is kind of advancing and taking it to a whole nother level and bringing friends with it to kind of really mess you up. The virus, again, hides out in the liver and the spleen because of the toxins that accumulate there. Um, your liver is meant to kind of clean things out. Your spleen cleans things out, gets the toxins out, and kind of processes them out. This is the fuel for the virus. It feeds off of toxins. It feeds off of that, that kind of byproduct of you know, the heavy metals and the bad food you eat. Um, so that kind of is where it's gaining its strength so it kind of hides out in your liver. Stage three. This is kind of where all hell breaks loose, so to say. Um, so the virus, again, is, and from each stage, it, it's, again, triggered by some kind of hormonal, uh, physical, emotional, major stress that, that puts you in that kind of, like, hit by a truck mode um, that will take the virus on to the next level. So stage three Blood, this is where the blood test will show that you had the past infection, which was mono. It doesn't mean that it's going to show you have an active infection now. It's, it's very hard to detect with a blood test. No matter what doctors say, it is it's still very difficult to detect. What that does, it, while it's in stage 3, it lowers your body's immune defenses. goes deeper into your liver, deeper into your spleen causing them to become inflamed and enlarged. And this is, again, where the cr kind of all crap breaks loose kind of thing. They release the toxins in your body, and each um, Epstein-Barr virus cell 
dies every six weeks, so it kind of like is re reproducing itself every six weeks. So when that cell dies, it becomes toxic and increasing, um, you will get increasing fatigue. And again, it's actually feeding off of all that toxin and the dead cells actually is activating the active Epstein-Barr virus. Um, then these neurotoxins at attack your nerve function and block the immune system from fighting the virus. So it's going in kind of disabling thing and you know blocking your immune system from actually being able to fight it off. Um, it slows liver function, which leads to low hydrochloric acid in the stomach, like I talked about in leaky gut videos. You get the food rot, leaky gut, and in extreme cases can lead to hepatitis C, which is a really bad infection of the liver. And in this stage, after all this, the inflammation, the toxins, you can develop food allergies that you've never had before. This is usually where the gluten comes in. Um, you know, when you're a kid, your grandmother made bread, pies, whatever, you could eat them and didn't break out. Now, all of a sudden, you have a gluten allergy. Two, two things happen there. The way bread's made now is nowhere near what bread was 100 years ago. And the Epstein-Barr bar virus is screwing up your immune system, your liver, your spleen, possibly other organs. Um, and again, it gets advanced by stress hormones, adrenaline, cortisol. So when you have a major physical stress, emotional stress, hormonal stress, the adrenaline and cortisol will come in and that is the prime fuel for the Epstein-Barr virus. It kind of like loves that and it thrives off of that. So every time you, you know, lose a job, you know, or if you're one of these people who work out two hours a day every day, or, you know, you have a breakup of a marriage or your kids leave home, that kind of thing is one way to trigger it out of hiding and take it to the next level. What this does in stage three, it really starts attacking major systems, major organs. One of the biggest things, and I have been there, done that, got the t-shirt to prove it, um, is thyroid problems. Epstein-Barr virus is responsible for 95% of all thyroid problems. I didn't believe this until I started really looking into it, and I will do a thyroid video soon, but not now. Um, and I, you know, that's a personal issue. It really hits close to home for me. Um, it goes deep into your thyroid tissue, which is right here is this butterfly gland that's right here that is responsible for making your life hell if it wants to. Um, it basically attacks those cells and disabling the normal thyroid function. So if you ever watched that movie Independence Day with Will Smith, it's kind of like when the Jeff Goldblum computer geek guy sends the computer virus up to the mother alien ship so it filters down to all the other ships and then the force fields down they can go and attack the alien ships. That's exactly what happens here. So if they disable the thyroid, which is basically the mother gland, um, then all these other things can come in and attack it and take out, you know, basically it does completely disrupt your endocrine system, which will disrupt every other system in your body. Um, so when the thyroid can't fight the virus, leads to weight gain, brain fog, fatigue and insomnia, which don't go together, but they, it, you're, with the thyroid, you're exhausted all day till about eight, nine o'clock, then you're wide awake all night long. Repeat and rinse, all day, all day every day. Fatigue and insomnia, hair loss, depression, um, thyroid problems can, it's a pretty big list, I'm not gonna go through all of it. Um, but all of those things will happen when the thyroid, the T3, T4, aren't being produced the way they, they are meant to be. Um, the, and again, the Epstein-Barr virus attacks the thyroid for a specific reason, to disable the endocrine system, stress it out, so you pump out, again, even more cortisol and adrenaline, which is the fuel for the virus, and it becomes because it comes stronger and stronger because its main target is your central nervous system. So in, now we're into stage four. Again, it's been triggered by emotional stress. And when your thyroid goes down, 
it's basic it doesn't really need a huge emotional or physical stress to take it to stage four because your thyroid has literally kind of given up and is down for the count so any little stress will take you to the next stage um, once the central nervous system is compromised the virus attacks the inflamed nerves so you have constant pain constant fatigue this is where fibromyalgia rheumatoid arthritis chronic fatigue syndrome come in Epstein-Barr virus is responsible for these conditions a lot of people I know that have chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia you know they they're tired they exhausted it's very very frustrating for them to get treatment or diagnose even diagnosed because they say oh well you're just tired you're a new mom or you're a college student or you're working too much it gets dismissed when they know something is not right you know when something's not right in your body um, there's no cure for this the for these three conditions they use drugs as a treatment but the drugs aren't fixing the problem so they're just band-aiding it and it's not going to fix what what is causing the Epstein-Barr virus to advance so far so um, I know this is probably new for most people I, you know I, again like I said a few months ago I had never heard of this until I did some research and found um, more and more information on it and excuse me I'm going to choke <laughs> I'm so dry in here <laughs> never a dull moment <laughs> so again I like I said it was something that really opened my eyes and in the next video because of time I'm going to tell you how to heal the Epstein-Barr virus and what steps I took and what works and a few things that you can do it's it's very easy it's ridiculously simple but it, it can make a huge difference in your health and any kind of problems that you were experiencing with glands or fatigue or that kind of thing so if you have any questions please post them in the comments and stay tuned for how to heal the Epstein-Barr virus